Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's another very, very wonderful day and it's a, a Monday, uh, the 7th day of October 2024. Uh, while we are thanking God for uh, um, a wonderful life, uh, for the strength to survive till this moment, unfortunately there are some people in this world who are marking one year of war. I remember that this is when the uh, the Gaza Israel Gaza war started when um, uh, some people entered Israel and uh, killed over a thousand people. Now that war has raged on, and today marks one year since then. In fact, we are not even talking about the Ukraine and Russian war anymore uh, because it's been a long time. It's more than two years that one started, but. And we thank God for small mercies. In spite of all uh, the uprising in Nigeria, we still come cool and collected here in our country. And we thank God for the kind of resilience that God gave to us. Today on the program, we are going to be looking at reverse politics. We are going to review uh, the local government election. The matters are rising. That's what we're calling it this morning. That's one of our hot topics. And the second one will be Lagos to ban single-use plastics, sachet water by January 2025. It started with um, the, the takeaway, as we call them in Nigeria, and uh, so many other things. So now they're talking about banning pet bottles and then uh, banning uh, sachet water, which means you cannot buy bottled water anymore and you cannot buy sachet water anymore. So maybe everybody has to just get a flask of it. Yeah. So we'll be looking at that as well. Of course, we have top trending issues uh, that we'll be talking about this morning. And after that, we're going to be re uh, reviewing the papers, looking at some of the headlines that made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies. Uh, once again, good morning and welcome to the program. In case you missed it, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. We'll pause now and take a quote for today. Our quote for today is, if you don't like the road you are walking, start paving another one. If you don't like the road you're walking, start paving another one. That is according to Dolly Parton. Uh, very apt. Uh, you could think that, okay, let's, let's just relate it back to Nigeria. If you don't like the kind of Nigeria that we have, uh, start doing things differently that you think will make Nigeria better. It's not running away, uh, but just you want to arrive at a goal. And that goal is not just for you, but it's for uh, your children, your unborn children, your neighbors, and everybody in Nigeria. We just want a better Nigeria. So if we don't want the kind of Nigeria we're finding ourselves right now, the best thing is not to run away, is not to ask for cessation, is not to say we should disintegrate and all that, because, hey, whatever is in your region will remain in your region, no matter whether you call yourself a different country or not. Because if the people there are thinking like the regular Nigerians are thinking, no matter what name you change and give it, uh, it will still be the same. So let's start to pave a different way if we don't like the way we are going. And it's a collective decision that we want to be a better country. We can't leave it to the president alone. We can't leave it to the governors alone. Uh, sometimes, even though we give them the mandate, we should also realize that we gave them, them the mandate. So we are going to uh, hold them accountable for whatever we, we, we want in this country or whatever is going wrong. We send them on an error and we have to guide them to take us to the promised land that we wanted. And also in your life, whatever you're doing, there's always this saying that you can't keep doing the same thing and uh, thinking about different results all the time. If you find out that something is not working, uh, do uh, something else that will give you the result that you want. It's not to abandon it, but it's to look for better strategies. So relate that to your life, relate that to whatever you do in life and make sure that just like they say, if you want a better future, you have to write it or you have to create it yourself. That's the same thing put in different words. If you don't like the way you're moving now, pave a different one. Thank uh, you, thank you uh, Dolly Parton. 
if you remember her, the uh, famous country musician, uh, that was what she was or that was what she is. Um, in, in case you don't remember any of her songs, maybe you remember a quote of many colors that she sang. Okay, so that has set our minds on a good pedestal this morning, I hope. And then we're going to go straight to our top trending issues this morning. First of all is that Nigeria commences sale of crude oil in Naira. The federal government of Nigeria has officially commenced the sale of crude oil and refined petroleum products in Naira, marking a significant shift in the nation's energy market. On Saturday, October 6, Wale Edum, Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, announced that the sale in line with a directive from the Federal Executive Council began on October 1, 2024. In a statement, Edun said the move was affirmed after a post-commencement review meeting by Implementation Committee, which was formed to oversee the rollout of the initiative. The meeting involved key stakeholders, uh, including the Minister of State for Petroleum, the Special Advisors to the President on Revenue and Energy, as well as top executives from the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC, and Dangote Group. Edun stated this strategic initiative and bold step taken by President Bola Tinubu's administration is expected to have a lasting impact on Nigeria's economy, enhancing growth, stability, and self-sufficiently. Sufficiency, rather. The decision to sell the crude oil in Naira is seen as part of the administration's broader efforts to strengthen the local currency and reduce dependency on foreign exchange. It is also expected to position Nigeria for economic resilience amid global market complexities. As of October 1, Nigeria has fully implemented this initiative with the Nigerian Ports Authority NPA facilitating coordination among stakeholders to ensure the smooth sale of crude oil to the Dangote refinery and other refineries in Naira. Kudos to the federal government, kudos to whoever is in charge, Wale Dun and uh, the, the NPA and all the people that have come together to make sure that this is done. Like they said, it is going to strengthen the Naira because we wouldn't be sourcing for the Naira uh, to, to uh, buy a lot of things, especially the crude that Dangote, with that much capacity, uh, he could have been looking for dollars to come and buy our own crude, but right now he can just pay in Naira. So dependent, dependence on the, on the dollar for a lot of things will reduce because buying, from, uh, buying the crude oil is done in, in Naira and buying the petrol, which is the refined product of the crude, is also going to be done in Naira. So our money stays right here and we hope that the Naira will be stronger. But that it goes beyond just Naira being stronger. We hope that this move will make the fuel or the petrol or whatever it is, diesel, uh, petrol, kerosene and every other thing that comes out of the crude oil be cheaper than it is right now. Otherwise, well, we will see our, our, our reserves grow. We'll see money come to the coffers of the federal government. And if it doesn't translate to the life of people being better, then we'll just be looking and saying, what difference has it made? We do hope that as this happens, we also are going to be paying our debts and uh, borrow less uh, from the international bodies, uh, thereby making us um, uh, totally indebted or, or perpetually indebted to the bodies that we could have been paying if we were taking note of what we were doing in this country as a people. So let's hope this is going to be the game changer. Let's hope that uh, this is the road towards getting back to where we can buy fuel or petrol at the rate of 200 naira or even less. It is possible in this country and I'm sure that the people who are in charge know this, but maybe uh, we are just facing this so that uh, they can use this money and do, do all other things, especially like defraying some of our debts and making sure that we are truly an independent nation as we claim to be. So kudos to the federal government if this is finally taking off. Uh, as at 1st of October, 2nd of October, 3rd of October, there were still speculations that this had not happened. Uh, that the, the sale of crude in Naira had not happened. But now we're being told that it started on the 1st of October. So kudos to whoever is in charge. I do hope that nobody will come out, uh, maybe in a matter of hours, to come and refute that claim and say that it is a lie. It never happened like that. A lot of things have happened and the announcements have been made and people came out to say, no, it is not true. Let's hope that this is not one of them. So... 
Uh, NAVDAC workers give federal government 72 hours ultimatum for indefinite nationwide strike. Workers in the Health and Food Regulatory Body, National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, have given the federal government a 72-hour notice of strike over anti-workers' activities. The workers vowed to embark on the nationwide strike from today, 7th of October 2024, if their demands are not met. According to the General Secretary of the In-House Union, Comrade Sally Ahmed Alade, the strike action follows the expiration of a 14-day ultimatum issued earlier uh, to NAVDAC management to address their demands. It was gathered that the management's failure to address the pressing issues raised is the main reason for the strike. The strike directive was issued by the leadership of the Federal Area Council of the Medical and Health Workers Union of Nigeria. As a result, all NAVDAC staff have been instructed to participate in the strike. I later charged all members to fully participate in the strike, adding that the importance of collective action. He said, too, they should remember that the success of this action is dependent on their collective determination and resolve. This indefinite strike is expected to significantly impact NAVDAC's operations, potentially affecting food and drug regulation in Nigeria. The duration of the strike remains uncertain pending resolution of these issues raised by the union. Okay, I don't know why our, our problems in our country always um, end up in strike. What happened to the table? Because everything we, we say, or all the time we say that everything ends at the table. You come to the table for a discussion. Why would issues be raised, for instance, and these people are not called to the table to resolve these issues all the time? Even when ASU is trying to go on strike, sometimes they will tell you that the government or whoever else uh, is supposed to go to the table with them is not going. You're not promising anything. You're not making uh, them see any reasons and all that. Are you just leaving them that way? Sometimes when you try to reason with people, they will also see reason with you and give you more time or rearrange themselves or compromise, meet you halfway and all that. But in most cases, these things are not done. So uh, what happened to the table? Who broke that table that uh, our leaders uh, failed to go to to discuss matters that really, really are important? This is not that we're talking about, regulating food and drugs. So if they do not do what they're supposed to do, imagine what could happen. It's like the police going on strike. We've seen it before in our country. Uh, the police went on strike and we saw the kind of chaos that came uh, into the society just because of those few days that the police went on strike. No matter how uh, distrustful they might be, no matter how much we may, may hate them, uh, but they're still doing a very significant job keeping our country safe and uh, people in, in check. You can just imagine a place where there are no traffic lights and there is a, a junction or yes, um, and then uh, vehicles are supposed to move. You see the kind of uh, hold up that will build up there just because one traffic warden is not there. But when he's there, you may not see how important that person is. So bring that to NAVDAC now. If they down their tools, in this indefinite strike, they're not saying the strike will be for two days or one week or something. It's an indefinite strike, which means it might take a long time and we don't know what is going to happen uh, in that sector uh, just that time that they will be on strike. So I hope it never gets to a time where they will go on strike and whatever they're raising as issues or as an issue will be addressed by the management and if the management fails to do that, I'm sure there's a minister that is in charge, maybe a health minister or a labor minister or whoever is supposed to hear the complaints of these people can step in and make sure that these issues are resolved. We don't want any sector of our economy to go on strike, especially not something as sensitive as health because NAVDAC is part of health. NAVDAC is even part of security, you know. So let's do our best. Let's find that table wherever we broke it and threw away uh, this table. Let's go get it and bring it back so that we can always meet at the table to discuss these issues. ASU is there spoiling for a fight uh, over issues that came up since 2009. 
2009 to 2019, that's 10 years, which means it's 15 years since agreements were re reached and they have not been met. It is not good. And it's not the best for any government to come up and then begin to blame the previous governments. When you were taking the reins of power, you knew that this was going to be a problem. So as soon as you entered, it is either you called these people to the table to renegotiate and give timelines for these things to happen, or uh, you just pay up or do the things that were, were, were asked uh, of you as a government, not as uh, an administration, a particular administration, because if you step into those shoes, nobody cares whether someone who was there uh, was washing their feet or not. You are the one who was supposed to wear those shoes and feel comfortable in those shoes, or even if you don't feel comfortable, it's not our business because you decided, you elected to wear those shoes. So NAPDAC management and everybody, please step in and make sure there's no strike in that sector. A final top trending issue here is um, very contentious uh, because a lot of people have divergent views about it. Akwaibom State Governor Moeno has appointed his daughter, Helen Enno Oberki, Obariki as the acting first lady of the state following the death of his wife, Pastor Patience Eno. The governor made the announcement on Friday during a condolence visit by Nigeria's first lady, Senator Oluremi Tinubu, and other dignitaries in New York. Eno stated that his daughter would take on the duties of the first lady, ensuring continuity of the office and the projects initiated by his late wife, particularly the Golden In Initiative for All. Uh, he expressed his confidence in his daughter's ability to uphold the values and vision of her late mother, affirming his commitment to sustaining the projects initiated through the First Lady's office. In an emotional tribute, the governor described his late wife as his greatest supporter and toughest critic, recalling their lifelong bond. He emphasized that his late wife's absence is irreplaceable and his, force, uh, his focus remains on sustaining her legacy through the work of the First Lady's office. <coughs> In most cases, when things uh, happen in the political sector, I, I usually am, you know, so against it and all that. But I don't really know what to say about this. I think I, from the bottom of my heart, I think I support this. Uh, reasons are very simple. First of all, the office of the First Lady is not uh, covered by law, so he's not breaking any law. And what do you expect? First Lady is First Lady. Uh, that office is just an office created because of the, the proximity of whoever is involved to the person at the seat of power. So if uh, Omoeno is the governor, the first lady is just because he's related to the governor, not because the law allowed that. So whatever goes to that and the, the, the wife has initiated some projects and she wants to do X, Y, Z and she dies, it's nobody else's business to go and stay there and begin to do it. It's more or less like a family thing. And why am I in support? When the office of the First Lady started in the time of, I think, Babangida or so, that he's the one who made it uh, very prominent. Miriam Babangida, uh, First Lady, that's one of the most prominent First Ladies we've ever known in uh, this country. So he crea she created that office, more or less. And we allowed it to stay, even without constitution, the constitutional backing till this moment. And then somebody is coming to say, my wife died. She had an office, not because the law allowed it, but because she was my wife. And then she has died. I'm going to put my daughter in charge of that office. And you're saying it's wrong. We allowed the office of the first lady to stay in the first place. So we cannot cry foul over this. It is a family thing as far as I'm concerned. It is not a lawful thing. It's not a constitutional thing. So if one family member dies and another one steps into those shoes, I don't, I don't think he's breaking any law. You can't bring the deputy governor's wife to be the first lady. I mean, you know, first lady is supposed to say, um, uh, my husband is doing this, or my dad is doing this, or something, something. He's supposed to represent the person of the governor as a family member, not as a constitutional office. So when the second lady goes there to sit, will, it, will she be sitting as as the wife of the governor and then who becomes the second lady of the country so um, we move the secretary uh, to the the deputy governor uh, to become the second lady or how are we going to do that so if we don't want things like this to happen we should make we should either make sure that office never exists anymore 
or if it has to exist, let it be constitutional and then we'll spell out eventualities like this. What if the first lady dies? Who is supposed to step into those shoes? Will it be one of this, uh, the children or will it be the second lady that will step in? How will it be done? Or will it be the secretary in that office of the first lady? We should spell out all these things. But otherwise, nobody has the moral right to say you should step down. It shouldn't be the daughter. Is that, is that, has it become a family business? Blah, blah, blah. If it is not a family business, what is it? Is it a constitutional office? No. Did all Nigerians come together to say the office of the First Lady should exist? No. Even the First Lady of the Federation is saying that there's no uh, budget to her office uh, and so she's just doing these things because she's getting international connections and funding and so she's doing all these things. So if she, she, God forbid, she dies now or something, something takes her out of the scene, will you now say the Second Lady, uh, as it is, will now go and take this office? which she is doing out of the goodness of her heart and getting funding to do all the things that she's doing. You might argue that the office of the First Lady is having some kind of budget going to that one, but we allow the illegality to stay, so nobody can cry that, cry foul, because no law covers it. If the law has covered it, I don't know yet. Maybe that constitution is yet to come out. We're hearing that the constitution will be reviewed and all that. Put the office of the First Lady there. It has come to stay. Put the, um, the regional um, provisions there in that constitution, it has come to stay. In our constitution, I'm not sure we have uh, north, south, 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 this, that, that. It was just created by words of mouth and that were, that's what we've been doing now. And we even see that every, every zone has a commission. South South has a commission and that is understandable. I don't know why we have other commissions, uh, North South, North East, North West and all that and all that. So what are the ministries doing if we have to have different commissions to develop these places? So there's no need for Ministry of Works, uh, there's no need for Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, no need for a lot of all these ministries if we can have the Ministry of Niger Delta Development, Ministry for South South Development, Ministry for, um, for South West Development, let those ministries have the departments that are going to take care of all those things because it, it, it doesn't make sense to me but here we are so office of the first lady is not covered by law it's a family thing it is created for people who are related to the governor and in most cases is the first is the wife of the governor when the wife of the uh, the of, of, of the former president Olusha Gwambasanjo died who took over the office of the first lady was it the second lady was it Atiku's wife it wasn't so think back and know that this is something that you shouldn't cry over it's unfortunate the, doc, the governor had to lose his wife and we pray for the repose of her soul and whatever he decides uh, for the office of the second lady, uh, the first lady, we 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 will support. Uh, okay, I support. Not every Nigerian will support it. Uh, people are asking, is it a family business? Well, guess what? It is because it is not covered by law. They are there just because they are related to the governor. It's not the same thing as the president <coughs> of Nigeria sending his children anyway to go and represent him as um, as 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 a president. It's not the same thing, so don't say it's, it's the same. Okay, at least for me, it's not the same thing where uh, a president is supposed to visit some, somewhere and he sends his sons uh, when he could have sent his vice. There are provisions constitutionally for that. He could have sent his vice, he could have sent his, the secretary to the federation, uh, they could have sent anybody in his office, the minister and all that, and you sent your children. That's not the same thing. It's not the same thing at all. But anyway, that aside, may the soul of uh, Mrs. Omoeno rest in peace and may God give the husband the fortitude to bear the loss. And may that daughter who is now feeling the shoes of the mom uh, have the wherewithal to carry on the legacies of her mother as she should. Okay, that will be on, uh, all rather, from uh, our top trending desk, and we're going to take a short break. When we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Stay with us.